welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our presentation of a famous episode in the life of Michael Wilde. What you are now seeing is a seascape off the coast of Ireland. At this particular time in history, the Irish people were awaiting the arrival of a French expeditionary force which was to assist them in the fight for independence. This is one of Ireland's national monuments, preserved at the Geneva Mall in the county Wicklow. It was here almost 200 years ago that Michael Dwyer and his comrades took a stand for Irish freedom. The movie you are about to see tells the story of that particular fight.
the den of a mall in County Wicklow. We see the local schoolmaster, Peter Bull, who is giving lessons to the children of a mall. In those dark days, it was forbidden for Catholics to receive an education, and classes were held in secret. Good boy. And now, my dear children, we come to our lesson on the history of Ireland. As you know, Ireland has lost her independence. The Irish people are oppressed by foreign soldiers. Even our children are denied an education. They are kept in ignorance of all that is part of our Irish heritage. Our very way of life is threatened, but it was not always so. At one time, Ireland was renowned as a seat of piety and learning. One of our greatest ancestors, then Colin Kill, said, Jukhi and Amshira Wendon, who walked at the way in the Aden, being a Makiriyagana, or the one in the Makiriyagana. Which means, the time shall come, O Brandon, when you would feel it painful to decide an errand, the sons of kings shall be few in number, and the learned men shall be deprived of dignity. Our saints and scholars kept the spark of Christianity and Western civilization alight during the reign of the barbarians and re Christianized Europe after their downfall. But now our country is laid waste. <gasps> In 1998, the Irish people rebelled against their oppressors. 
They were very badly defeated. Their leader had to take to the mountains to hide from the soldiers. At length, brave Michael Dwyer, you and your trusted men, were hunted all the mountains and crashed into the glen. Sleep not for us and listen, think ready, laid and body. The soldiers know you're hiding tonight in the wild and night. I don't worry, Patrick, it'll be over soon enough. Well, boys, the whole countryside is swarming with soldiers. They are out to get every man that took part in the rebellion. We had better stay hiding up here in the mountains. They'll never find us up here. I think we should surrender and hope for leniency. By the way, where's Sam McAllister? He went down into the village for food. He should be back soon. Here he is now. Oh, you're back, Michael. Did you see all the troops prowling around? I did. We'll have to be very careful. to stay up here in the mountains. Look here, John Savage. But you know it's a bad habit to speak with your mouth full. Huh, well, food is so scarce around here, it's not likely to become a habit. Let's surrender and hope for leniency. here until help comes from France. What help? At this moment, the organization of United Irishmen, of which we are all members, are arranging with the French government to have several ships of the French fleet sent to Ireland to help us fight the English. That's right, and the man who is organizing this is Wolf Tone. Wolf Tone was an Anglo-Irish Protestant who was assistant secretary of the Catholic Committee and one of the founders of the United Irishmen. Dear, if you've been working too hard, you should take some rest. But how can I, my dear, when my country is in such a sad state? What can you do? I'll tell you. To subvert the tyranny of our execrable government, to break the connection with England, the never-failing source of our political evils, and to assert the independence of my country. These were my objects. To unite the whole people of Ireland. To abolish the memories of our past dissensions. And to substitute the common name of Irishmen in place of the denominations of Catholics Protestant or dissenter, these were my means. I must go to France to arrange for the landing of French troops in Ireland to assist us in our struggle against England. Well, do be careful, dear.
you don't heard the news about Wolf Tone. He's gone to France to get help from Napoleon. Oh. The sooner our men take some home from the mountains, the better. Here's Mary Dwyer. I wonder how she heard from Michael. It's a fine Sunday morning, Mary. Are you coming to Mass with us? I am. God bless you all. Have you heard from your husband yet? Indeed, I haven't. He's been gone for months. God protects us and bless us. What's to become of us all? Away, and Nebraska, time she and let any view them wrong. Many towards the throne, he said, Nay, where walk again? We are in the packet, and they shall sure for wash a man. Oh, God, send this home safely to me, Michael. That comes very too to old.
Will you give us a song, Evelyn? I will, Father.
I think we should surrender and go for leniency. Will you hold your fish to pass and fight for Ireland? I wish the French would hurry up and get here. I don't. The French have landed! Hey! Hey! Thank God, Moses! Hey! 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 General Humbert landed with a detachment of French soldiers at Killala. The Midorman joined forces with them, and they all marched on Ballina and captured it. Hurrah for the true hearted men of Fountain Dio! Then they advanced towards Castle Bar. When they got there, they chased every English soldier out of the town. We have them on the run now. Where are the French and the Mayo men now? They're moving across the Midlands towards Dublin. They've even crossed the Shannon into Longford. The English are gathering forces at Ballinamuck, and it looks like they're going to make a stand there. I see. They have brought up reinforcements from Dublin under Lord Cornwallis, the new Viceroy. Lord Cornwallis? I wonder if he's still smashing from the licking George Washington, devil. <laughs> no, the Michael, Michael, I want to tell you something. Maybe. Maybe. You'll be home for Christmas. Uh -huh. uh, no. Michael, General Humber brought only a few men with him. That's a disappointment. We were expecting a larger force. All the country people in Mayo are with the French. But the property people, both Catholic and Protestant, have not given General Humbert the full support. Well, Wolf Cohen's still in France. He'll bring a larger French fleet with him. We'll just have to bide our time. We're behind you all the way, Michael. <laughs> Well, my darling, I start for Dublin in the morning to meet with Lord Cornwallis, the new Viceroy. I understand he has some instructions for me. Perhaps you are being reassigned to a new post in England. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Shouldn't place too much hope on that, my darling. More likely it has something to do with a crackdown on those rebel fellows. Oh, I do hope we don't have to stay here much longer. I miss the wonderful social life we had when we were in England. Do you remember, darling, the day we were married? I was hoping they would send us to some exciting place, like India. We could have seen the Taj Mahal, or danced together at some rich Maharaja's palace. Instead, we end up in a miserable little garrison in Hackett's town. Now, now, my dear. One must serve the Empire wherever His Majesty sees fit. What? Chasing bands of rebels through the Whistler Mountains? Oh, really? Courage, my dear. When all this is over, we shall return to England and enjoy once again the splendid life to which we are accustomed. I do 
to see you too, Mary. But what's Patrick Lynch doing here? I'm not supposed to be here with anybody else. We don't want you nor your sort here, so get out. I won't. together again, Mary. Of the rebellion. 
The present war here in Ireland has been termed a religious one, but you may be assured it has nothing to do with religion. It is purely political, and the insurgents are principally headed by Protestant leaders. The United Irishmen consist of Catholics and Protestants, and if they cannot agree on religious matters, they are nevertheless bound together by Republican principles. This renders our task more difficult. I see, my lord. I should like to take this opportunity of congratulating you on your splendid victory over the French at Ballinamas. Thank you, Captain. However, I should like to point out to you that it was a relatively easy task. The French force was but a small one, and we overcame them without great effort. But I have good reason to believe the French are now preparing to land a considerably larger force in Ireland. Should this happen, it is quite likely that any Irish rebel leader, still at large, could easily incite the Irish people to join forces with the French, as O'Malley did recently in County Mayo. <coughs> uh, excuse me, Captain. If such were the case, we should have a tremendous task on our hands, and we might not emerge victorious quite so easily. Therefore, I am entrusting you with the task of taking Michael Dwyer, the rebel leader in the Wicklow Mountains, which, as you know, falls within your jurisdiction. My lord, I have already made several attempts to capture Dwyer. He is most elusive. Thus far, he has successfully eluded all our endeavors at bringing him to justice. The local people appear to sympathize with his cause. They constantly give him and his men shelter and will not reveal his whereabouts to us. I am quite well aware of the situation, Captain. However, you must get the people on your side. See to it that your men conduct themselves at all times in a decent and military life manner. <coughs> we must not risk alienating the people from His Majesty's troops, Captain. Every soldier must respect the local inhabitants and refrain from barbarous coming. With all due respect, my lord, I should like to say that my men are doing an excellent job under the circumstances. These rebels are fighting in their native land, while my men are operating in an environment which is totally unfamiliar to them. The defense of the men is highly commendable, Captain. However, we must get Michael Dwyer. You cannot capture him. Invite him to surrender. Michael Dwyer surrender? On what terms, my lord? Offer him to pardon. And if we pass this to Australia for himself and his family, we must remove Michael Dwyer from the Irish scene. As my lord wishes, I shall do my utmost. One time when walking down the lane, when I was alone, I met a country flower, and she was young the night. They passed and said, let you be so if you be quick and tell the place when you did find me flown, I seem to know so well. She took and kissed the first flown one. And softly say to me, This flower comes from the Wicklow Hills, Few and few so sweet. Its name is Michael Dwell, Let's lay this flower alone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
so that all Irishmen may be free, whether they be Catholic, Protestant, or dissenter. Good man, sir. I don't know what to do, I hope for lean, you see. The grass that grows on Ulster Hill was nurtured by our martyr's blood, and all the little murmuring rills tell us the tale of how they stood against every fierce invading horde that came to loot and spoil and slay. They tell us how the Ulster sword cut straight the path to freedom's day. And by your colonel's holy fanes, and by every field and green cheer on, we swear to break the fashion chain to win and guard and hold our own. Good, good, yes! I can't believe it! There's another leader up in government by the name of Robert Emmett. He'll keep up the fight. Collins Cottage, in Jerry Numbuck. Jerry Numbuck? And they tell us that Savage and Hustler were with them. Can you be certain that they are going to this common fellow's place? I'm absolutely certain. So Michael Dwyer has finally abandoned his mountain retreat and is now descending into the Glen of Imbal. Hey, what about me money? Sergeant? Bring the reward money. Here you are, sir. <laughs> Sit down again. Two bloody shillings. The reward says five hundred guineas. We haven't captured Michael Dwyer yet. (laughs) 
Sergeant, get every man out of bed and have them ready for battle in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Let's brave Michael Dwyer and tell them dotted men were sent us over the mountains. And trapped into the glen. The stealthy soldiers followed with ready blade and balls and swore to trap the outlaw that night in wild them all. They prowled around the valley and towards the dawn of day, discovered where the faithful and fearless heroes lay. Around the little cottage, they formed into a ring and called out, Michael Dwyer, surrender to the king. What's going on? They answered Michael Dwyer. Into this house we came, unasked by those who owned it. They cannot be to blame. Then let those guiltless people on questions pass you through. And when they pass in safety, I'll tell you what we'll do. Done. And now, MacDonald, your work you may begin. You have an army outside. We are only full within. We have heard your haughty summons, and this is our reply. We're true united Irishmen. We'll fight until we die. Then bust the walls with lightning. Then pull the leaden rain. The skills around re echo. The thunder appears again. The soldiers falling round him. Spread wild feet with pride. But ah, when Dan Comrade is wounded by his side. There are three remaining good battles still to do. Their hands are strong and steady. Their aim is quick and true. Oh, the hunters, the furious shouting, the savage soldiers raised. The house is fired around them. The roof is in a blaze. And brighter at every moment, the lurid flame arose, and murderers were the laughter, and the cheering of their foes. And spake the brave McAllister, the weak and wounded man. You can escape, my comrades, and this shall be your plan. Place in my hands a musket, and lie upon the floor. I'll stand before the soldiers and open wide the door. They pour into my bosom the fire of their array. Then, while their guns are empty, dash through them and away.
Many a scarlet soldier he promised soon would fall for those his gallant comrades who died and wild them all. Three, 